All right, Call of Duty fans, it's time to do it again. We got another semifinals match coming up. Arlington, make some noise for yourselves. All right, we got one squad in the grand finals, and it's time to get another one. Coming up next is the Kings of the North. Make some noise for Toronto Ultra. We got Benz, Cami, Kleenex, and Insight. Make some noise for the Ultra. Coming from the six, we got the Toronto Ultra. The boys in purple are looking so damn good. Insight, man, he looks like he's ready to play. He's pumped up, he's got his arms up. He was being funny in the video earlier. I can't wait to get this one underway, Belly. Like, hey, yo, players, I have a feeling that the other team you're about to announce are trying to steal this one away. Yeah, Belly, you said it perfectly. They definitely trying to steal this one away, trying to snatch another bag from their opponents. I give to you the LA Thieves. Give it up for Envoy, Kenny, Draza, and Octane. The LA Thieves. The boys are coming out flexing, smiles all around. When Kenny is looking happy, looks like this team just can't lose. Man, I swear there's something different about Octane this year. You see when he's walking out, he looks super focused. We saw vintage Octane yesterday. We need to see it again today. Octane, there's something different about him. But players, I feel like both of these teams are just built different entirely. They are built different entirely, and this stage is ready to go. Only one more squad can join Seattle Surge in that grand finals, and we're about to find out now, Bill. All right, so this is it. If the winner goes on to the finals. They will face the Seattle Surge, and I can't wait. The us send us over to Lando and Steady, fellas. Take it away. Thank you so much, Billy. Yes, this is going to be a banger. We're super excited for this. Who's going to join the Seattle Surge in the finals? Well, we're about to find out. Lando and Study here on the cast to provide who will be that second team. And to be honest with you, Jay, coming into the kickoff classic, I, I kind of expected maybe a roster like Toronto Ultra yeah. to be here, but it's a pleasant surprise to see the Thieves on the other side of the stage. 100%, man, especially after the performance that they put on yesterday versus Optic Te Texas. That was an absolute banger of a series. They were able to win both hard points, and that was completely mind-blowing to me with Envoy having the series that he had. He had like a .8 throughout every single respawn. It wasn't his best performance, but they still were able to get the job done. And I think that's the most impressive thing, right? The, the whole story was about Envoy trying to get his revenge, right, versus this Optic Texas team. And the fact that he doesn't have a great series, which is somewhat unexpected given the circumstances, yet for the team to walk away with a victory 3-1 to one is nothing short of impressive. But again, both teams still early on in the season still have a lot to learn from each other. But you can see it based on the stage, based on the fly-through. We're getting into the mix nice and early, Jay. And this is going to be scary oh, for me. This is scary for me for the Thieves because they're 4-0 so far in hardpoint, but they have only one Gabutu and Tuscan. So now, with Kenny running that third sub, he's going to be the player that I'm looking to watch in this one. I think it's fair to say you're looking out for somebody like Kenny. Also, from the Ultra side, it cannot be understated. The desk hit on it perfectly. Kleenex, 186 engagements in just four maps. Unbelievable stuff there from the tissue, but he and Vance will look to lead the SMG crew alongside what will be a very, very fun map of Hardpoint as already off the rip. It's Ultra with a slight advantage, but LA Thieves clearing things out in the middle side of the map. Able to find all four kills. You still have spawns coming in from the Ultra back stables. Octane's gonna be able to get away, but Kenny finds two in the feed. That's gonna be a nice four dead. Last player is gonna be Kleenex in towards Barn. He finds one onto Envoy, but now the rotation is gonna be in for the Thieves. They're gonna be early set up for this P2 hard point. And already off the rip, Kenny four in one start already from the skies. That's gonna be five in a row. Does get taken down, but his presence toward the start has at least got to stun the Ultra boys, but Octane as well. We're talking about players on streak, Sam LaRue on five in a row and having the proper attire for a map of this caliber. He's got the MP40 out, he puts the auto away, as that's gonna be six in a row, as Strafe earned as he gets taken down by the nade. And so far, this has been a great hold from the Thieves, continuously holding this back spawn. 40 seconds remaining on this P2 hard point. They're forcing all of Ultra to continuously flood through that plat side. It's not working out for them, as the Thieves are gonna have 30 seconds here left. 
They have to start thinking about that rotation. You see on one in the middle of the map. Already has a two-piece thinking about that rotation. He's gonna try to go for the huge gunfight onto Kami. And he picks it up on a fire spree. He's gonna be on board. <laughs> Finally gets taken down, but my goodness, the amount of sprees that we have seen already off the rip from the thieves. Their guns are firing. As Octane's putting in the damage toward the final few seconds, they will grab a majority of time at field as well. Last player inside of the hill is gonna be Kami trying to contest, provide some fire, but now it's draws the turn, it seems. And now Ultra, they do have the max points for now. So they do find two kills in the feed, but Kenny trying to cause problems from top. He's gonna to eventually get dropped. Now Envoy attacks from the left. He's able to find two, trying to flip these spawns or at least set up the pinch for his team. Putting some shots through the back window. Octane able to break through the front, and that's gonna be the thieves breaking in. They just have to get a couple kills here, but that's gonna be Kleenex. Finding three in the feed on a five spree. The engagement king already showing us why he deserves that title. Now make it six in a row. Clearing out kitchen, clearing out tools. The house belongs to the tissue. As now let's go and toss it aside and go to a listening with the ultra. Come on, go up. Nice one, Octane, 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 Octane. I think one's in kitchen. Yeah, nice. Look at my man, look at my man. How do I win here? We got left. Our voice, our voice top one, absolute mate top one. Top one, top one. Down low, down low. Trust the deep left. Trust the deep left. Let's go to deep left. Deep left, and then one down low right. On the thing. Trust is absolute, man. He's holding. He's holding the trench. Trust is holding trench on back car. I'm not down on back three. Trust is back car. No challenge. No, he's not down there. Nice. Envoy, Envoy, one shot, one shot, hold, one shot, hold, Envoy. Wait, 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 wait Oh, you're sorry, no, uh, P P1, P1, might be in me. Okay, we have Left side, left side, left side. I got right. Yep. Was it hurt? He's gonna go left. Yeah, low, 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 low. Envoy, absolute low, literally so weak low. M1's one, a pin one, as well. They spawned in. One's not one. Alright, don't know, man. It's pretty nice. Uh, I'm gonna move in. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. P2, 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 I'm on the right at the moment. Yeah. I'm John Dan. I'm making a turn. Kenny's gone. Kenny's gate. Kenny's gate. Kenny's gate. What's my dog? Okay, I'm done. 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 Okay, I'm Throwing down, bro. Alright. They could go low P3, I'm trying to watch it. Yeah, one's close gate. I got nade. Got main, I think. Good, you got nade. One more, one more. Last two, last two, last two. 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 Great small talk out of Toronto, really throughout that one. Not, not surprising, right, that this team is coming into year two as Kenny finds three in a row. And that's going to be four dead now. Going back to the rotation on P1, you see Kenny trying to push out towards Kitchen, but eventually he's going to get taken down. But Ultra trying to work their way around Gate. They do not want to flood through Kitchen. They do not want to flood through Flash. Because that's exactly how the Thieves are set up right now. They find another two kills. Still getting great time off of this P1 hardpoint. As Kenny able to find one and draws it with the trade. This is still just a great hold from the threes overall. Yeah, a great hold right now coming in from LAD. And again, the questions came as soon as we saw the vetoes. Uh, you know, based off of the scrims that we've been able to see, Thieves, not the greatest Bokage team. We like them on maps like Kubu. We like them on maps like Berlin. But so far, they have come out of the gates and shown us why the scrims aren't necessarily to be counted. Everybody rocking MC in the chat. You can't be doing that, right? It's all for practice. The Thieves, a great beginning up by 40 points. Rotation. Is nearly about to be inbound, but Kleenex finding the route, making the plays. He and Vance combined for two. One more to the back side as Octane able to stay up, and the squad spawn on top of him as well. Ultra trying to hold from the front, but the ARs continue to fry. And that was a big kill from Octane. If he doesn't pick up that kill, his teammates do not spawn on him, and they do not keep control of this P2 hardpoint. But you see no hesitation coming in from Kenny. He's pushing out that flat side. He's trying to spawn all these people, all the players from Toronto Ultra towards back tower. Eventually, he's going to get taken down. So far, a 50-point lead for the Thieves. 
and climbing as the attack is starting to come through bottom barn octane is able to find two pulls out the pistol he will get taken down but with 30 seconds left ultra you cannot give up this time this is the thieves they are going to be focusing on our rotation but you see number one in the top middle is going to be banned still putting on pressure yep still putting on the pressure is kenny now finding his 25th kill leading the entire game in overall eliminations for the moment Having a great kickoff classic so far. Since it's a 1.19 KD coming in to this match. Kylo Ken doing everything he can to try to send this franchise, to send this organization to a final. Drasa, meanwhile, sitting on the flank. And you notice, trying to play this one carefully. House, it can be a very chaotic kill. Trying to make their way around the flank, but Ultra doing a great job at, at, at least Taking them out from the back, and then applying the forces toward the front as Cami now sits on three in a row. That's a full wipe of LAT. Now it's going to be all four dead. You see number one advance. They get big pictures. Pushing out gate, able to find one. As long as they take control of kitchen, keep control of that A plat, they should be able to get this remaining time. But these are putting a lot of pressure there. Draza and Envoy working their way throughout the back. Able to find two kills and then Octane with the third. Able to break right on in. 175 to 115. Already up 60 points. These are getting closer and closer. And a huge spawn comes in for the Ultra. You saw at the very end of that hill, LA Thieves checking the back tank, trying to make sure and see had they got this team in a spawn trap. But when in reality, Ultra toward the back. So at the very least, if you are the Ultra down in this game, you don't get trapped in the back of your base. In fact, now you have a solid setup coming in toward this next hill. And Jay, it's fair to say they need a high majority of this time as kills continue to roll through. Toronto, first wave done, but Octane still alive. Yeah, and this is the first hill on the P-Run rotation where they just couldn't get in. Like, we were in a listening with the Ultra. They sounded real calm and collected, but they just could not break in this hard point because of the Thieves setup. And that's going to be three dead. They still have the spawns in the back if you're going to be Ultra, but that's four as they are going to be stacking this point, just putting on the pressure. All of Ultra spawning back stables. Right now, Thieves are finally going to break that 200 point mark. Getting closer and closer to the finish line. Inching ever closer. If you're Ultra, you've got to break in. You cannot afford for this time to go the opposite <laughs> way. And how about the teamwork out of LAT? We put question marks on a map like Bocage. And they're showing us and showing everybody why the doubts should not have existed in the first place. Final few seconds still contested for Ultra, needing every single second that they can accrue. Octane off of the rotation early insight. Trying to come in from the skies, but his teammates are watching his back. Now time for the streak. Who's got fortified? We're about to find out. And it looks like it's that guy. 226 to 124. The Thieves have such a great hold, but paying attention to number two, which is going to be Cami, slowly working his way around the back. Has the potential to make a play here, but they are able to spot him. Still, they're getting closer and closer to the finish line. They have to get on this point. They have to try to break in, and that's going to be two. Make it three, but Ambo finds another two of his own. Toronto, at least for the time being, have control. It just feels as a matter of when. Again, if you're the Thieves, 12 seconds away. Yes, Octane hitting the shots. Looking to clear out this water side for his squad mates. His insight at least is able to have a lap for a moment. Vance gets taken down from the stairs. Insight still fighting. Eight seconds left here at P5, but third set of rotations are just a matter of moments away. And Thieves can smell victory. They can smell blood in the water. Kleenex doing everything he can just to get Mixy, get involved in the fight, try to push these players out. And we know how difficult P1 can be to hold. As Octane finds a lane again, you just want to get some time. You want to try to exploit any opportunity that you can, inching ever closer. Now nine seconds away. 241 to 143, 40 seconds remaining on this P1 hard point. Here comes Draza in the point. Going to be able to at least get a couple seconds. But the big picture is you do not want to flip these spawns. You can still win it here. As it's gonna be three dead, they get on the hill. Inside gonna be the last player at gate, 248. And that is gonna be the Thieves walking away with the first hard point. Wasn't expected because they've won Kabutsu. They've won Tuscan. This is a map where Kenny had to run a third sub and they stepped up tremendously to take map one. And that has to hurt too, right? Because Ultra, we saw it in the vetoes, right? They wanted to get rid of Kabutsu yeah. despite the solid victory they had versus the Florida Mutineers on it yesterday. They're aware of the Thieves. They try to get rid of their best map, but when in reality, it appears that Bokaj very well could be an ace in their sleeve. 250 to 147. How about that consistency? 31 from Envoy, 32 from Kenny, 32 from Draza. 
And Sam LaRue leading the way at 34 and 23, 27 non-traded kills a game for the main AR. They just did a great job at just holding down the P4 hardpoint, at least off of the first rotation of hardpoints. They were able to hold it for a full 60. And then off the rotation, you have players who are picking up streaks. Even though on the opposite side, Kleenex had streaks to work with, just that these are so much better at when they needed to get the trades in the hill, even for P3, when they were flooding through Kitchen, they were able to get the job done. So now they find themselves up 1-0 in the series, but now they're going into a search and destroy, and it's not going to be Desert Siege where they are 2-0. That's true. Yeah, that's a, that's a very fair point to bring up. Again, for this LA Thieves crew, it's been the same story. It's been, you know, solid victories and hard points and search and destroys, but it's been the same map. They show us that they're not just a one-trick pony. Gavutu to Bokaj. An impressive performance across the board, but Jay, I know you talked about it a little bit. Really collective kills, great coordination in the tight spaces that Bokaj can provide us with. Walk me through it. What'd you like, especially from Thieves and the moments we have on our screen? Right here, you see the Ultra. They're, they're in. This is where they get a good hold. Kleenex was able to pick up some streaks. So now you're forcing Thieves off the rotation. And once we went into this listening, you see Ultra. They're putting on pressure here. But eventually, Thieves are able to find all the kills, get a majority of that time on that P4, and then hit a rotation and hold that front side of P5 while Spawn Trap and Ultra in the back. That was just great coordination from the Thieves from top to bottom, from the beginning to the end of this map to get the job done. Yeah, great overall work from the Thieves. And like I said, you know, we watched quite a bit of scrimmages throughout the offseason. And every time we watched the Thieves, one player in particular was really was really struggling, to be honest yeah. with you. And it was Kenny. Kenny has totally turned the tide around. Again, leading this team in KD coming into this. He's at a 1.19 coming into this match. And he has a phenomenal performance just across the board. The LA Thieves scream consistency as they'll walk away with Bokaj, Hardpoint 250 to 147. And there you see it, right? The, the map vetoes, the map bands that we were discussing. Toronto Ultra, very prone, very aware of what the Thieves have been able to do in their last two matches. They wipe away Kavutu, they still lose on Bokaj. Now, they got rid of Desert Siege, but you still have to worry about that Berlin Search and Destroy, which we talked about for LA Thieves. All right, they've only played Desert Siege. Problem for Ultra? They played this map yesterday, and they could not figure things out versus the Mutineers. Yeah, that was huge, man, because versus the Mutineers, basically they went A every single <laughs> offense. And the Ultra, usually when you're playing a map like Berlin, you're expecting a lot of teams to go B. Yeah. That's not what was the case, and now that's what caused them that loss on that map yesterday. But if you're the Thieves right now, up 1-0. Keep in mind, Octane was sniping out of his mind yesterday versus yeah. Optic. You're going to have to keep up that momentum because right now it's in their side for them to go out and be up 2-0 in this series. Yeah, absolutely. And we know, man, what, what Sam LaRue can do yeah. with that sniper in his hands. I mean, we've seen the, the numerous highlights. Granted, it's been on Desert Siege. It's basically a playground for the car. But again, he has been absolutely fire with this bad boy in his hands. And it's going to be a fun battle, right? Because we know Cammy back in MW, what he was able to do with the sniper. But it is not going to be easy, again, versus one of the best snipers that we've seen in COD history. And that man on your screen. Not just able to do it in Search and Destroy, but clearly, I don't know what it is. Like I said, it came to offseason scrimmages with this guy as well. He just, he just knows how to play. He just knows how to play what is the one of the most crazier maps. But as a main AR, he's just able to make it work. He was 34 and 23 with almost three minutes in hell. That's crazy. That's insane. You're Wild. allowing your submachine guns to just push out, slay, keep them spawning really far, and allowing Octane to just keep soaking up that time. It's just great work from him. If, if you're a main AR, right, or if you're in challengers, if you're just, you know, a player who loves to play some, some good old Call of Duty, you got to watch that guy in Vanguard. He is teaching out here already at the kickoff classic. But now it's time to focus in for some search and destroy. And we're going to Berlin. This is going to be a good one. Obviously, I'm expecting Octane to snipe that cross, keep it consistent to allow your teammates to get that information of how many players are going towards A. Let's see the early pressure coming in from the Thieves at that B-bomb. Dance is going to be that player that's pushing through low docks. So they're going to have two players from Ultra stacking that eight point. Dance is going to have to try to go big in this situation. Going Gammy, able to find Envoy, jumping off the tank. And Octane's there for the beams. No sniper, but he can make the automaton look like it. Again, bomb still in the hands. Octane trying to make his way to the site, but they've got to be thinking a player from Ultra has to be around this dock site. It would just be somewhat uncommon if that was the case. Kenny's able to read him, and now it's all on the Kleenex in the one versus two. Bomb is going to be rather going to be planted, and we'll see what Toby can provide us with. A clutch here would be huge. And making his rounds through library. 35 seconds left. See Octane playing fairly close to the bomb. But they have a crossfire set up. Octane's watching the flank. Kenny's watching his flank. 
Octane's gonna be able to set that up. Just a beautiful setup from the Thieves right there. One from a 3v2. They were able to both get a kill at the same exact time. Instant go for the plant, and they already had the setup that they wanted to put at the end of that round. Good round right there out of the Thieves to go up 1-0. Yeah, it just looked like a very well-prepared team who was aware of the timings. You saw Kenny turn on Vance, who was sitting inside of Docs. Again, just aware of what the common spots are on this map. And again, we talked about Desert Siege removed from this particular map set, and Thieves said, hey, we want to play some love. We, we want to play some Berlin. So that is something to, uh, to keep in mind, Thieves. Maybe a map that they feel very comfortable with. And the guy that we talked about coming into this one, Octane, dropped the hat trick in that early round. Sits at 3-0. and oh. And this play is going to be heavy on Envoy. He's going to be the only player at this site. See Kleenex use that smoke grenade to at least draw a couple players from the Thieves towards that B-bomb. But it opens up A. Bomb is going to be planted. It's going to be a 44 retake as Kleenex is going to be able to take down Kenny. Draws it with the immediate trade. As Cammy takes down Envoy, down to 3v2. And Draza has to be careful. They are going to need him for this retake as Envoy falls. Then the two, rather the one versus three, all on to the Alaskan Assassin. But on the objective, is able to take down Bantz. 1v2, 20 seconds left. They do have some visuals inside of the train station. A valid attempt, but overall numbers favoring the Ultra, and they rock with it. It's all on Kleenex right there. He throws that smoke grenade towards that B-bomb. He draws a couple players from the Thieves on that side, and then they get Envoy to back down from A. Once they get that free B-bomb plan, you have multiple players who are watching flank, multiple players who are watching bottom mid, and eventually they slowly pick them apart. Great round right there at Ultra to tie this up. Yeah, solid stuff coming in from Toronto. And again, the big position there toward the stretch for Draza. Talk about how he could be the big difference maker, a big gunfight that goes down in the middle. Could very well have changed the way the round looks, but back to the attack, and there's the bad boy we've been waiting for. Draza picked apart. Great shots for Bantz to kick off this round number three. Envoy looking to clear out that Doc's position while Cammy's there on the cross. A cook nade could be the end of Envoy's life here in round three. Man just to stay alive, but again, Ultra, they're aware of the position. Envoy quickly goes for the play. Shadana 3 4 bomb is going to be planted. You see number four on your minimap. Kleenex is trying to time this flank. Octane lines it up, able to hit the shot on the end site. Forces it to a 3v3. Envoy, he's, he's making a play. He's making a play through low dots. He's able to take down the first. There's another player in sight. Unfortunately, that's going to be Cammy with the beatdown. Forces it to be a 2v2. Kleenex finds Kenny as well. So now it's all on Octane with the sniper. <laughs> Sam LaRue, don't do it. They're going for the defuse. They throw down the smoke, and the defuse will be successful. How about the Ultra? The retake, it looked like that was not going to go their way whatsoever. The coordination in the clutch to toss out the smoke, to try and aggress Octane, and right when he tries to peek on the defuse, that's when the smoke is popped. Excellent plays right there out of Toronto. And that was Kleenex as well. Like, Kleenex was the guy who's like, hey, we know Sam is going to be in this back boathouse. Let me throw this smoke so at least I can protect you if he kills me. And that was a beautiful heads-up play. That's how you know the teamwork is there for Toronto Ultra. This is basically what's been driving them for the last, for the last year since this team has been formed. Okay, so it's not going to be Cammy with the sniper. Insight looks to give it a whirl. Is anybody home? Maybe. Potentially, possibly. But coming in from the employee only entrance, Envoy. Laser and few, a few shots, able to drop one, but overall trades favoring Toronto is the bomb. Gonna be playing. And you see Kleenex, once again, he's going on that late flank, able to take down Octane. Now it's a 1v3 for Kenny. The bomb is gonna be planted at A, but he knows that Kleenex is still gonna be behind him. I get bad timing here, and Kleenex just another great round out of the young man. Just being the playmaker for this Toronto Ultra team, going for the late flanks, making sure he has the smoke grenade in his back pocket to use whenever he needs it for a situation. This is just great work, great adjustments coming in from the Toronto Ultra. That's what we expect to see out of, out of a team who was, what, like top three in Search and Destroy yeah. last year based off of record or at least around that region. A team that can make adjustments, learn on the fly, and again, they were taught quite a few strategies yesterday versus the Mutineers. Again, we've talked about it, the constant A hits weren't able to work it out and taking a page out of the Mutineers book. But big round already for the Thieves. They'll once more take on the role of attack. 
Envoy with the bomb on his back as Kleenex looks to sit inside a small. Seven out of the eight players sit in some form or fashion around the train station. Only player on the outskirts is going to be Cami, but the action's going down inside. A great first blood there for Draza. And now they can work this bomb plan, but here comes Fancy. He's able to at least even up the numbers for the time being. Octane with the trade. But look at where Kami's going. Kami might have gotten the greatest timing on the flank. Inside's able to take down one. Now it's on Kami into 1v2. He spots both players. Able to take down the first. He knows he's back alley. He thought he was. But now, he's going to wrap it around. Bomb is going to be down. Draza working his way through train. He's going to come towards back alley. Kami spots him. 30 seconds left. Draza is trying to make him work for this. Draza is trying to make him work. How about the plays from Draza? 20 seconds. Does he think he's going to be here? He checks it! You've heard the Alaskan assassin. How about the frigid freak? Cold blooded kills. Woo! And right there, Cammy was in a great position. They had the bomb down. So many things. There's so many different ways you can play that round. But with Draza, he's going to be a confident player. He just completely wraps the entire bomb site and catches Cami sitting in that corner to get back into this game for the Thieves. Now down 3-2. On the defensive side, you see Ultra trying to take this bomb once again towards B. As Draza's going to be the player that's calling out the cross. Pants already makes it, though. Able to get the first blood on the Kleenex. Now you just want to play your life. Great shots out of Draza, my goodness. Now sitting on three in a row, acting. Great visuals there from top fire, as they'll look to put as much pressure onto this side as they can. Again, nobody directly inside of the docks, and it has to provide a little bit of stress if you're on Cami's spot, but has the right angle to look. The smoke tossed. And Cami can't allow for this bomb to go unnoticed, has to push on through. Meanwhile, Insight did everything he can to watch over him. Envoy finds two, and now it's all on to Cami. He sneaks on in. They're trying to go for the defuse. He's going to find the second one. Somebody's stuck in a wall, it looks like. But Kenny will escape. I don't know what was happening at the time. Looks like a timeout will be requested. But at the very least, if you're the LA Thieves, you do win the round. We'll figure out what's exactly going on. But for a moment, I thought that player was just mindless. I was like, what the heck are they trying to do yeah, right now? I, I don't know if I, I thought we were playing hide and seek. Yeah, I don't know if he liked the wallpaper on the wall or something like that. <laughs> Your shots kinda got call scary. walls, right? That, yeah. Maybe, kinda, maybe, that, maybe that style of play? It's okay. It's okay. They still get the job done. It was a kind of a scary 1v3. But Kenny was able to get the kill and eventually work the defuse. The timeout does come in, though. So we are tied at three apiece. <laughs> So far, this has been a great search and destroy map between both of these teams. A lot of clutches from both of these rosters. But going into these later rounds, I think for me, it's going to be all on who's going to be that playmaker. Because we see yeah. Kleenex early into this. But Envoy, he has to step up at least when it goes to those late flanks. You, you got to open up with that first blood. And so far, a majority of these round wins have come off that first blood. Yeah, that's a great call. Like I said, when we talk about the map like Berlin, you're going to see that sniper out a very solid amount of the time. But we've seen... Some good variation right on this map. You've seen some A hits, you've seen some slow B routes as well. The smokes, the, the snipers, everything really and truly being utilized here in this game number two. But as we said, Search and Destroy tied three to three. If you're just joining us wondering why we decided to pause ourselves in the middle of this Search and Destroy, well, you know, just a minor tech issue. I think somebody gets stuck in a wall. Was it Kenny? No, it was, it was Octane. It was Octane? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't really sure. Kenny was laughing as per usual, so I wasn't 100% sure if it was him or. Maybe if it was Sam LaRue. Maybe the, maybe the sniper got caught in the wall? Probably. Maybe the Probably. AR? Yep. It's the, what is it, the Anastasia sniper barrel? Yeah. A little long. On automaton. Yeah. It's really long, but it's it a great weapon. It is. It is quite long. We'll move on from that. Yeah, we'll move on. It'd probably be best if we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. But as you said, playmakers, right? Talking about the remainder of this search and destroy. What, who'd you call out for, for Ultra? Was it Kleenex? Kleenex. How about for Thieves? Envoy. Envoy. Because Envoy, you know what he's capable of. He's usually that, the guy that's going to go for the late flanks because I'm pretty sure that bomb carrier is going to be Draza. So as long as that one-on-one -on -one battle between those two players, they don't really have to meet up, but they just have to continuously put on that pressure towards the middle of the map. You cannot give that up. You have to always force at least one player from each team to make sure that they're watching that late flank. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, too. Like with this ultra roster, the one thing that they were so good at last year, even when they faced off against Optic Chicago, right? Envoy, a part of that team. Oftentimes, he would get thwarted on the flank. Yeah. He, oftentimes, he would get called out, or they would just know the timings 
And Ultra have already put that on display so far throughout this season. Obviously, we know it from Cold War, but just the awareness of this team. I mean, really playing control against this roster has got to be so difficult just because they're calling out pretty much everything that's going on. So, like we said, we talked about different players that can make a difference. Envoy will do his best throughout the remainder of the search and destroy to, to try and provide some pressure on Toronto. But it is not going to be an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. I know we've talked about it for Thieves. Have been great so far in search and destroy. We'll see. If they can keep that record hot, as we are back into this bad boy, Berlin will resume. And this is where Envoy has the potential to be that playmaker. All the attack is going to come in from the Thieves at that B-bomb. As you're going to see Draza putting down shots to at least one player into the middle. The Bant's able to open up that first foot on the Octane with that MP40. Great shots across the map. But just pay attention to the mini-map. Envoy eight. makes his way to fire. He's going to take the long way around street. The ball up, pressure coming in from Toronto towards the middle of the map. Vance takes out the second, so now it's going to be a 4v2. Envoy might not even pack this round right here. Kenny has got to find a pick. He's going to provide some support. A nice play from Cammy, at least to stay alive. Finds the kill as well. And by the time that Envoy's finally arrived at the party, all of his friends have gone home. So now it's somewhat of an awkward situation where you're thinking, do I stay? Do I leave? And the door slammed right in his face. Doesn't matter. Four to three, Ultra. Yeah, that's just truly unfortunate if you're on, boy. You were in a great position. <laughs> you worked to make so play. hard. But Toronto Ultra, they just took mid map control. They put the pressure on, made sure they did attack through bottom P2, took top middle broken. And they, once they opened up that first spot on the Octane, you just slowly start picking them apart. And that was just a great round from the Ultra. Yeah, quite a few hits going down toward that dark side as of late. We'll see if any more A attacks will be in our future. And it appears that that very well could be the case. Toronto, at least off the rip. Going to focus some attention toward that back A alley. Insight. Few missed sniper shots, but Kenny's holding the angle. He's going to be ready for this. Fires his weapon. Another player enters his line of sight. And a great crossfire set up as Envoy and Kenny take down half of Ultra in a matter of seconds, all up to Cami and Inside. And Envoy pushes all the way through. With the repositioning, Inside's going to be camping in the back of their spawn building. As Cami's slowly trying to work through A, trying to get a pick. Inside probably is going to be able to spot him. He takes him down, and Cami also finds a second. So what went from a 4v2 is now going to be a 2v2 with 45 seconds left. Draza and Octane working through middle, but here comes Cami. Right in fire. Gonna work his way around P3. Eventually, we have to try to get this bomb plan, but Insight. Oh, just toward his right. Just toward his right. Insight's able to find one. And he'll also find the second. The 2v4 out of Ultra. It looked like LA Thieves had the perfect setup. That was a 4v2. That was a 4v2. They just got that done. They got an early two piece on the Thieves side. Envoy and Kenny both get equal two piece, e easily kills. But then they just slowly got picked apart one by one. Once, clean, I mean, once Envoy tries to make that play through the back of the spawn, you give that kill to Insight. Cammy wins a huge one on one. And then I know you run around as a pair of two, but Insight with the great awareness is able to snap onto both of them. Ultra up 5 3 at game point. Next, Octane is going to be looking over this A bomb. Not able to spot anything, but. It's looking like the thieves are going to commit towards this site. So that Arctan was 0-2. I was like, what in the world has he been doing? I forgot that, of course, he probably resets to get back in the lobby. So any stats, got to keep that in mind. Vance, much like we talked about, players similar to Envoy, always on the flank, always being pesky inside of your base, as that's two dropped early from the thieves. And it's going to be up to Arctan and Envoy to try to send us as far as they can. Envoy finding the pick on the Kleenex, sees the glint from the sniper and quickly has to reference back around. There's Bance for another. And it's all on to the Dark Prince. What can he provide us with? Can he send us to another round? A 1v3. See Bance with the defuser, somebody right to his side. Can he find the second? No, not going to be the case. Toronto responding after dropping this map yesterday versus the Mutineers. Come back and have polished their setups. Six to three here on Berlin. Just to go back to that round eight, that was the biggest round of the game. Like the fact that they had a 4v2 advantage. Usually when you're up 4-3 in the search and destroy, that is the make or break round. To tie it up at least 4v4 for the Thieves side. But once they got 2v4 clutched on, that's just unacceptable. You have to make sure that you're teaming up with each other, playing the trades, or at least running around as a unit, not allowing these guys to slowly pick you guys apart. Fortunately for Octane, when he spawns back in, 
0-3. I know he didn't have a donut, but now the series is going to be tied at one apiece. Yeah, it absolutely is. And that, that's exactly what you were talking about coming into the search and destroy was the adjustments that this Ultra team can make. Again, yeah. one of three rosters coming in to, uh, what, into Vanguard who don't make a roster change. Obviously, having the year that they had, you wouldn't exact, rather expect them to, but this is the reason why, right? This team, the ability with that in-game communication, their ability to make adjustments. They looked a little bit flat yesterday versus the Mutineers, but they perfect those strategies. And they learn quite well, it's fair to say. There's a reason why these four guys are together. 100%, man. Like, their teamwork is out of this world ever yeah. since last year. That is what got them through a lot of series. But like you said, man, the adjustments from yesterday to today, to today from versus Florida, they just simply could not stop the A plant. Every time that the Thieves were trying to attack that bomb site, they always had a setup to at least set up on the late flank, go all the way around the backside through middle broken. They had a counter every single time. So they may, that means that they went back home yesterday and they studied up to be focused for today. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to take a look at some highlights throughout this search and destroy. And again, a totally different situation than what we saw them with here yesterday versus the Mutineers. Again, a roster that can turn things around incredibly quickly. but. Like we said, just in general, it's been a phenomenal series up to this point. LA Thieves respond and that opening bocage. Search and destroy there from Ultra now to bring us to a one-to-one -one score line. Jay, we thought it would be a close series. And so far, through our first two maps, it's living up to the hype. Yeah, it's great. It's great. But the only thing that scares me now is this next game mode. Yeah. This was Toronto Ultra's best game mode last year towards it the was. end. The only team that was able to, to beat Atlanta face in that mode. And now for the opposite side for the Thieves, they're currently 0-2 on it. Yeah. Yesterday, they lost it versus Optic Texas, and then previously in their last series, they lost it as well. So they just have to make sure that their teamwork is here because you have to make sure you just let go of the search and destroy to bounce back in this one. Yeah, that's exactly right. You got you to gotta have that, uh, that short-term memory, yeah. right? That's exactly let what it you go. got to have. Much like me, whenever we're casting Hardpoint, it's just, I don't know, I don't know who has spawns, to be honest with you, but no, like I said, one-to-one -one right now in this series. Who will take the advantage as we come back after the break? We are headed to some control.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. Alrighty, folks, welcome back to the Call of Duty League Kickoff Classic 2022. It's the first one of the season, and we got to take a look back at that search and destroy. Jay, give us a little bit of a refresher. Let the fans know who just happened to tune in at the right time, what they just missed. It was back and forth, at least early into this game, but the really crucial round had to be round eight. In that 2v4 situation, you just cannot allow that to happen if you're the Thieves. You do not have to push up, be super aggressive. They have to work the bomb plan because they're on offense. You allow two players to eventually find 1v1 gunfights. They take them down, and then as they were rotating to at least go towards that A bomb, Insight puts himself in a great position to win that round, puts them up 5-3, which is which is a, such a crucial round, man. It's the make or break round usually in search and destroy that 4-3 round. And the fact that they were able to take that in a 2v4 situation and eventually the following round, win it. That was a great adjustment from the Ultra. Like we said yesterday, it wasn't the best performance on that map like Berlin, but today to get the job done. Right, exactly, right. The 2v4 just kind of catapults them into the advantage, and they're able to ride that to some victory there in the search and destroy. And now, right off of that clutch and off of that sequence, it now puts the LA Thieves right with their backs against the wall. They've yet to win it control so far 0-2. What, I believe they, uh, what, they lost that Tuscan control versus Optic yesterday. Uh, three to one, then they lose versus Paris in a round five on Gabutu. So they've had experience on both, haven't seen a, total, a whole lot of success. And the problem for them as well is that Kenny, the only player that sits above a 1KD so far throughout their two times being on this map, rather in this mode, the other three players, Jay, 0.87 or lower. They're going to need some more team consistency here out of LAD. And off the rip, that's going to be inside finding two. LAD is responding with two of their own. It's just great early pressure from the Ultra to not give up a point early. Yesterday we saw Optic. They were able to take B for the very first time that we've seen all year long. Advance hitting down shots. That's going to be two. Trying to go for the third, but Insight trades with the nade. So now Ultra take control of A. Now the tick progression is going to be done. Okay. Each side as Kami finds another two. Great work coming through from Ultra, and they're also going to read this rotation, right? Draza trying to cause some noise over at B, but... Cami aware of it, at least somewhat gets some bad timing, and so with that, it will cause a few of the forces from Toronto to distance themselves off of A. And focus now towards the B side. Envoy trying to sneak around toward top church. Kleenex sniffs him out. And Draza as well. He will get taken down. So I thought for a moment we'd see LAT right force the issue at B and then overall attack A, but that is not at all the case. And they've got players lingering through middle and nobody can seem to get much map positioning. And inside is going huge at that A point. There's going to be 30 seconds remaining. Finally able to stop that time. As the first stick progression is going to come in for A. You see number two on the minimap though. Cami's not going to try to get this up. Slowly working his way around the flank. Envoy potentially has a good read. Does Kami check the corner? He does not. He's going to drop. So that's going to be three dead. Make it all four for the side of Ultra. A should be completed. And the Thieves are going to be able to extend this time by a minute. Yeah, and that's just the strength, right, of that A point there for the attacking side. A great place from Toronto for the most part. And that one sequence goes awry, and that's where the Thieves look to exploit it. Inside having to distance back. Join arm in arm with his good old squad mates. Thieves on the attack as Octane will start things off in this team fight with the pistol kill. Whoops it out versus Kleenex, and now Bantz sitting in somewhat of a power position. As we rock to a stalemate, both teams looking for the pick, and they'll both get their wish. They're trying to attack through flat right now if you're the Thieves. And that's going to be an easy two-piece coming in from Envoy. Kenny finds the third. Nicest player starting to push up. You see Envoy pushes through back alley. He's eventually going to get taken down, but now this allows your team to stay pushed up, stay slain. But Bance is going to answer with two of his own to shut down that push from the Thieves. Now back to the drawing board they go. Keep in mind, Kenny, a long route through field. So while these fights are going on, there is somebody who's trying to make the play toward the stretch. 35 seconds and 8-8 eight to eight life count for both. So Kenny's found his way back. Church, you see a few of the arrows for Toronto just constantly looking back. And they know they've got to be spawning field. So with that... Ultra are going to have a good idea of where these players are coming in from. And Kenny, the long route, eventually gets taken down. Obviously, he sets his teammates up for squad spawn, so the life was not all for naught. Kami's able to rip one apart. That's overall the trade that favors Toronto. And with that, Octane, he gets beamed as well. Nice shots coming through from the cam, man. 
thieves now sit on zero respawns four total lives left and time's gonna run on out solid plays from toronto really a rotation that never came to fruition yeah that stalemate was basically the deciding factor of the round even though the thieves were able to find three kills when Bance was able to fly back in and shut down that push, getting that two-piece before he got teammated, that spawns all of these to spawn out back fountain because they still had a player inside P5. So with 30 seconds left, you have to take a super long route to try to get to the back. Kenny tries to make the play, but loses that huge one-on-one -on -one to Kami to eventually solidify the round for Ultra. And he still liked the very start of the round as well for Toronto. I mean, yeah. given, given how the play works out, it's just a matter of flying forces toward either side of the map. Low control defense despite losing that A point, which you're going to see, what, 99% of the time it feels like on Tuscan, as the Ultra will give it their best. Player 7 and draws up, tosses up the nade, gets the kill, and also will find a second one for his efforts. Last player on the point is going to be inside, and really, as a defense, it's a matter of when, really, once they get that A point, but holding them off for as long as possible is always going to be the objective. Draza once more, finding four. Great start here for Thieves, despite the one tick that Toronto has been able to grab. 24 to 24, Toronto right back on the same point. But you see they're also working B, you see inside all the way across, so now Envoy, he has to focus on him. To not allow that first hit progression to come in, Insight sets up beautifully, not to be able to take him down until now. But all these teammates drop at that A point, Cammy's able to find two across the map. They have to complete that A point because it's only a matter of time before Insight drops. With a minute left, Ultra down by two lives. I like to play from Toronto as well, right? Just put one player on the point, just continue to send the rest of your teammates elsewhere. You know you've got that one in the bag. This Kleenex does get taken down through middle. That'll be nice for Thieves. And really so far, here on defense, they like to play this one aggressive. They like to push up in your base, and that is exactly the words that Benjamin Vance loves to hear. They're playing aggressive. I can flank around. I love that. And with that, it is the three-for-one trade, and Vance finds the lane. Again, some of that aggression not working out for Thieves. In a corner, not expecting it. There goes Kenny as well. 16 to 14 in the lives. Ultra getting ever closer as Vance now finds himself on two. Slides his way in for the third. Octane with the nade says a prayer because that's what they're going to need. Toronto continue to keep that point moving. The second ticket progression was almost in, but Kenny was able to hit great shots onto Insight. So eventually, the Thieves take down three players. Last player in their spawn is going to be Bans. I don't think they know. Are they going to be aware of it, though? As Bans picks up another kill, he's just playing his life, trying to finesse it, trying to allow his teams to push through mid-map. Kleenex takes down Kenny. So now it's all on. If you're the Thieves, you have to locate Bans. Octane does. They take him down. Now down by one life with the Thieves. They have to hold for another 115. They want to win this defense. Great two-piece. Great two-piece coming in on on boy. Great plays coming through from Dylan Envoy. Eventually gets picked, but again, that two-piece finally settles the board. And it solidifies to everybody on the map. But the map positioning does belong to the Thieves, but less than a minute on the clock. And based off of lives, you've got two good pushes, two good looks at this if you're Toronto. But that nice shot from range comes in from Octane and allows for things to settle, but once more, Bans! He sneaks through the setup. This could be horrible for the Thieves. They're thankfully able to rebound and off of a two-piece from Draza. All is well for the time. Five to eight. Right now for lives. Ultra have got to be careful with what they've got. Cami just trying to stay alive. Cannot afford to fall at this moment. As I look to set up a team push around the backside. It's Cami and it's Bance. Looking to find the injury as Arctane once more finds one. Off the rip, trades back and forth, but that's a big kill coming in from Kleenex. 10 seconds left. Somebody has got to get on the point. They've got to make some noise, and they've got to stop this clock from moving as Envoy is able to find another one, trying to cut down these players inside of the patio, and it will be successful. L.A.T. hold. It's a great defensive hold out of the Thieves, man. They kept control of Platt. That was such a big job from Envoy to just consistently put himself in that corner, win the one-on-one, -on -one, and play his life beautifully. You also had the crossfire coming in from Octane standing on the back of their spawn on top of the truck to just help them out and even out the lives count to eventually get it closer for them to win the defensive round as the game is going to be tied at one apiece. We saw what Ultra were able to do in their first defense was at least contest his eight point for a little bit. But instead of inside getting a two-piece, that's going to be Kenny opening up with that kill. Start for Kenny. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kleenex now 9 and 18. And again, he's going to be getting a majority of these gunfights. You have to see him walk away with them. At least be even. And he was definitely more than even yesterday. 
Ultra a solid, or rather, excuse me, Thieves a solid start here over at this A point. And Draza gets the call, says, hey, fly on forward, young man. Time to fly and fry, and he's doing exactly that. On a five spree. Two kills away from picking up that glide bomb. A is going to be completed. Now they have two minutes and 20 seconds to work this B point up by five lives currently. Draza trying to finesse his way through the back. He knows that this one player in the back is going to be inside. The great movement coming in from Draza. Woo! Assassin, Assassin, Come on! able to find two. And then Octane from the back able to take down the third. Now you see Bans still sitting at plat. They're picking up every single kill. Bans has to try to be the playmaker here for the Ultra. He's just trying to stay alive. I don't know that he's there. He's still up, but Draza now finding himself on eight in a row. Bans being so careful. He is not moved from this position, but his teammates continue to get picked. They continue to get dropped. That's the fourth kill, finally, from the Ultra. Bantz reveals his position, but to no avail, the damage that Draza does is already felt from Toronto. And this can really be a waiting game for the Thieves. Obviously, you can play through the objective, but for the most part, kills is what can be the primary objective now. One player manages to sneak through, but you do not want to see Drosser right now on your screen. Up by 12 lives, they're going to be the Thieves. Drosser oh, is rare on the back, takes down the inside off plat. Keep in mind, he still has those streaks to work with, but you do not want to invest it here when you have such a big margin in the kill column. So yeah, at least gets the team kill. On to Vance, Kenny takes down another. 20 to eight with a minute left. You see Kleenex trying to hold down B5, but number eight in the back of the spawn is going to be Octane. Do Toronto know his position? Russ has got the comms. Wants to solidify this round. And Draz is feeling himself. He's 25 and 15. Again, it's 18 to 5 in life. So while this time is taking away, Ultra, they've got to play patient. They've got to play corners. But also at the same time, trying to gain some map press. There goes Kleenex. He gets wiped away. Bance, meanwhile, is at least able to drop one. But it's a three versus 17. Draza is 27 and 15. A three spree right now for the Alaskan Assassin. The Frigid Freak, whatever you like to call him, he's cold-blooded. And he's showing him what it's like to live in this kind of climate. That was complete domination from the Thieves. Once they captured that eight point, I'm pretty sure the entire kill feed was all white for at least 30 seconds. They were like 27 to 19 at a point, and eventually it got to 26 to 13. They were just completely outslaying him on that round. Thieves up 2-1 on the defensive side. Draza potentially working towards some orb kill streaks in his back pocket. As you see the early attack once again coming in from Ultra on that eight point. Envoy with the great shots onto Bantz. Octane and Kenny are going to be here, so that's going to be three dead. And you see what Draza is doing right up the middle alley. Unfortunately, he's going to get taken down. But this allows his teammates to get pushed up on A. Kami takes down one. But the pinch is going to be here for Bantz. This should allow Toronto to eventually get on a point, but great shots coming in from Draza. Draza once more there to save the day. Again, trying to contest the point, trying to keep Ultra off of this for as long as they can. As we continue to talk about on Tuscan, again, A, pretty much guaranteed. It's just a matter of when. And Envoy gets picked apart as well. But you see the Thieves, they're not giving this one away easily. They're trying to contest this. They're trying to get right up in the face of Toronto, make them work for it, make them strive for every single portion of map control as draws are called upon once more. Three down from Ultra, but they may have found the lane in to B. Just as Vance jumps down, he gets picked apart. 30 seconds left and nothing objective-wise to show for this round. Here comes Drops on the flank. Right oh the top fire. He's able to find another two. 33 and 17 already on another three spree. He's thinking about spawn kills. He's allowing his teammates to just focus on these players at B. He gets another one in the back of their spawn. One more player is going to be Cami. Takes down Envoy. But with 20 seconds left, Ultra needs to capture a point. Okay, Draza. I like the call. Calls it the streak. It's finally for a moment. Ultra, some control over at this B point, but once more, the life count instantly becoming a factor. In fact, it's really the time. That seems to be the primary issue. So many players to look at in so little time. 
Pants will at least pause the clock for now. At that A point in Thieves, they will look to aggress this. They will look to challenge. And they have every right to do so. Seven seconds left. All you have to do is take him off this point. Vance is able to find the opening kill. Finds the second as well onto Envoy. Just pay attention to the minimap. Look at number seven, Draza, going on the route. Trying to wake it for the last second. Insight's gonna be right around the corner. Fortunately, he's gonna shoot, give up his positioning, and the A point is gonna be captured. So now 12 to eight with one minute left. Thieves are leading by four kills. Draza staying alive, finds another. You see the pressure starting to come through the back. LA Thieves, they're holding for now. Holding for the moment. Knocked into aware of at least one player that's made it all the way around the back. It's going to be Vance, and it's going to be Kleenex. Your two SMGs that are going to have to lead the way. A nice kill there on to Kenny. As Vance looks to jump on in. It's Envoy, who ultimately is going to go for the trade. Of course, it's Draza as well. Getting into the mix now a four versus eight. Ultra cannot afford to lose another member as Cami drops. Octane's pulled out the SMG. There goes Kleenex. All on to Bance and Insight. There goes the last, rather one more. It's all up to Insight by himself. And he'll get picked apart too. LA Thieves. They've yet to win a control and they just found it versus one of the best teams in the game at it last season. They get the job done in the game mode, but it all comes back to that offensive win that they got. They had such a dominant start to the round, finding at least six to seven kills uncontested, untraded, and then eventually just maneuvered, hit the rotation towards that B point and continued on the spree. Draza had himself a map. Yeah, we gotta see the score. He's unbelievable, man. He's unbelievable. And on the opposite side, I'm pretty sure Kleenex was sitting at about 16 and 32. Yeah. We watched him yesterday. He had the most engagements for this Ultra roster. He had a 1.14 KD with the most engagements, but he's not having this series right now. He needs to turn up if they want to fight back into this one. Yeah, he's going to absolutely have to do that. Take a look at that. 38 and 20 from Draza. 4,100 damage in four rounds. Unbelievable work coming through from from this guy. I mean, that, that's, the, that's a great story about this guy as well, right? He comes from Alaska. He tries to play in Challengers just to just to even get an opportunity to see the stage one day. He has been, what, on the bench for the last two years. He did it with OGLA toward the end of the season. He's on the bench. He's off the bench. He's in the starting lineup for LA Thieves last year, and he finally gets his opportunity to start the year off. And boy, has he taken this opportunity and ran with it. Like I said, there's questions on him. There was questions on if he could run this SMG role, if he could be a primary player. <laughs> and it's great to see, man. He's getting the job done, man. 38 and 20 with 27 non-traded kills. Keep in mind that we were watching Draza run around the entire middle of the map. He knows the spawns. He knows the timings. The guy's been putting in work, and it's been showing. Now, going into this next hard point, so far the Thieves this weekend are 2-0 on oh Tuscan. Yeah. And this has been a great performance from them overall. But the confidence has to be through the roof that they finally were able to win this control here. Yeah, and it's also going to be a little bit weird if you're Toronto as well. Like, yeah. given last year, you know, you're used to winning controls. You're obviously used to winning search and destroys. So far, the strategy for them, at least first the Mutant Years yesterday, was win respawns. Yeah. They have not been able to do that so far. So, again, this team is going to really have to rebound coming up on this next Tuscan hard point. But we'll stay on Tuscan for now and take a look at the highlights. Shot out of a cannon with Straza from the very early stages. He was going off and making plays for the team, Jay. Yeah, Straza literally took over this map. And if you're in the Ultra, it's on Kleenex. Kleenex is the guy that needs to step up. He has to try to counter Draza because once they were able to walk away with the very first defensive win, but you saw the pressure that they that they had during their offense. They were able to get, at, like I said, at least six to seven kills uncontested. Draza was able to pick up some streaks. And usually when you're flowing like that, being such a young player, you can just tell the confidence is through the roof with this guy, making plays, hitting routes, just getting the job done for his team. Yeah, excellent, excellent plays coming through from Draza. And as you called it, you just kind of look at the scorecard throughout this game. Kleenex, nine and 19. The game progresses, just really does not seem to be able to apply the pressure that was necessary. And still 27. They still haven't died. It was 27 <laughs> to 17. They only died three times. They got 13 uncontested kills. That's unbelievable work from the Thieves right there to close that one out. Yeah, they've been working. They have been working yes. in that scrim room, uh, I guess, maybe all night. Who knows? Maybe they've been here since the morning has started. They have been grinding, and it's paying off. 
walking away with that Bocage hard point, 250 to 147. And now in the second respawn, they will control it as well. A great three to one victory. As we said, so far at Kickoff Classic, they were 0-2 coming into this match. And they're able to take it versus Toronto. But what a game out of Draza. I'm sure you've seen it on your timeline. You're probably tuning in saying, what just happened? Yeah, it was a 38 and 20 game, 27 non-traded kills and over 4K damage. Again, from the guy who was in question, he was talked about, can he run an SMG? How is he really gonna work as pretty much the third AR, the second SMG on this roster? And again, he continues to prove himself, honestly, when he shouldn't have to. He really shouldn't because he was able to be, he was that player for this roster last year and now he's not missing a beat. Comes into this year with that SMG, it doesn't matter if it's an SMG or an AR, he will get the job done because he's such a young player and usually when you have teammates left, when you're looking left and right, you have teammates like you have, you're going to be confident. All you have to do is focus on your job and he is doing that to the best of his ability right now. Yeah. You know the Battle of the North? Yep. Strauss is like, I'm from Alaska for God's sake, I'm pretty far up there. But we'll see if he can help lead this team to a victory. If he can get this roster to the finals here at the kickoff classic. LA Thieves up two to one. But Toronto Ultra, a group of guys who know each other well. They've been in this position many times. And we'll see how they can look to rebound. But Jay, it's undoubtedly the focus is going to be on Toby. It's going to be on the great Dane Kleenex to try and slow down this SMG pressure and send us to a game five. Here we go. Backs against the wall, Envoy is able to open up the first two kills. Inside fights two of his own, so now it's going to be a 1v1. Inside versus Octane. But if there's going to be enough Toronto players for the time being to at least keep control of that P1 hardpoint. 30 seconds left. You still want to contest this if you're the Thieves, but you want to make sure you hold these backs ones for that P2. You've got to be incredibly careful just to make sure that nobody is able to sneak through. Advance will come off spawn. We'll see what his route looks like as he'll run right back to the objective once more. Draza dropping in toward the front. 27 to 2. A great start here on P1, but Kenny is going to make him have to work for it. Going to make him pay for the positions that they were holding three in a row as Kylo Ken gets sent back to the respawn screen. It will be the Thieves set up and prepared. Now a call. Now Draza trying to hold this P5 push through. All the Ultra players trying to attack the bottom middle. Octane able to find three in the feed. Envoy with the trade, but Octane's still in a great position to take down Insight. Ooh. That's going to be a 5-3 for Octane. Just keep in mind, Spawns are still coming in for the Thieves from the back. But now all out pressure from Ultra coming in from flat side. Pulls out the SMG, but ends up getting picked apart. Toronto eventually makes their way on through, and now Cami playing ring around the rosy. No, somebody has to be back here, but how about Envoy from the skies? Is that'll be two for him? Make it a third one in stride! Excellent plays from the Dark Prince, and you already see he's thinking about spawns, he's thinking about next, trying to provide some extra support with his teammates, and they've read Toronto are still spawning at church. A huge push, as you see, they're prime, or rather, they're putting so much focus to the middle side of the map, they cannot afford to lose spawns here at Fountain. They're able to stay alive, take down Envoy, and at the very least, they are set up early for the Money Hill. And now Envoy's gonna be a player back roofs. I don't know if Cammy's gonna be able to spot him, but he's gonna be able to work his way through the back. Actually, actually going to get the good timing. He takes the player off the point for the time being. But this is going to allow for the pinch to come in. Young Kleenex on a 3 3, trying to make it 4. Oh, goodness. This is where you need this guy to get activated. He is your fastest player on your team. He can potentially pick up some streaks here. He could be huge on a 5 3. He knows where they're coming from, but Octane eventually shuts him down. All travel 5 point lead. Such great work from Kleenex, although player seven breaks on through. That's going to be Draza. He's able to jump on in, and that will actually flip the spawns with 20 seconds left. So really, if you're LA Thieves thinking about church, but at the same time, you're thinking, hey, if we get 30 seconds, 25 seconds, we'll absolutely take it at the fountain. As they'll hold on to the lead and grab a few extra seconds on top of it. Going to sit around 81 as we head in toward church. Toronto once more set up off the break. Cami. Looking to rejoin alongside the teammates. What do the Thieves do? How do they look to take this? And in fact, it's going to be three all through bottom church. No one's going to read it. They run right on through into the point and they take it for themselves. Draza once more on the flank. Some clever movement to try and stay alive. They'll also secure spawns. In the meantime, the man can do pretty much everything. Finally gets picked apart as Thieves look for a new angle inside of the hill. Now it's time to attack it from top church and side door. You see Octane trying to work his way through back alley. But eventually, Kenny and Draza are able to find two. Vance with the trade. 1v1, and Draza's gonna be able to win it. 
So now Thieves have control. Saw out flood through the front door. And Insight and Kleenex are able to find two. 20 seconds left. Thieves have to start thinking about that rotation. Ultra will be able to take the lead here. Yes, big time for Toronto. Already seeing constant lead changes. And shout out to Hot Hands Lounge trying to catch every single flank, every single long route. This Kleenex did eventually get found. That was trying to flank over here toward that roof side. But does get handled. And now, really for the first time in the last three hills, Thieves will be at the new hill early. Again, quite a back and forth game, but we know this hill quite well. Chances laid it out pretty much perfect for us. No trophy systems. It's all going to be about the nades as Thieves looking to break on in. Cammy's turn, and he'll pull up the SMG. Called the flex for a reason. Has one more in his sights. Not able to take it. A back and forth affair as we continue to battle. Trades going back and forth, but Thieves take the lead. Pay attention to number one, though. It's going to be Vance working his way through the bottom. Big win coming in from Envoy. So now it's time to push out church side. You see number seven, he actually pushes out flat, which is gonna be Draza. Great position, gets the first, challenging for the second. Octane's gonna be there to help him. But this final 20 should go in favor of the Thieves. You see number one off the rotation already. He's gonna be Bance. Thieves look good throughout the final few seconds. They will have the advantage after our first set of rotations. Again, a, really a first set of rotations that was incredibly back and forth. Great start right now for Octane, sitting at 12 and 9. And really, that's pretty much the only standout performance outside of Insight. So the AR is having quite a solid performance as the flanks continue to get dealt with. Both sides incredibly aware of each other and what they like to do. Kenny hitting quite a few nice shots from range, but only able to get one to go. Toronto holding the Thieves, as per usual, not trying to give up spawns, but Kenny cannot miss right now. Toronto so far have a great setup on this one. 30 seconds left. Once again, the Thieves do not want to give up all this time. This will be a full 60 on P1, but Draza and Envoy find two. So now they do have the numbers advantage. They're able to take down all four. They keep spawns for that church side. You see the all-out pressure they're starting to put out towards P3. Draza, unfortunately, is going to get taken down by Cami, But off the rotation, is going to be Envoy doing the fundamentals, making sure his team is ahead of the, of the game. We see what Toronto's going to do, right? They send all four at old. They're going to try to make this a field push. And they're not just thinking about the hill. They're thinking about spawns for the hill. And Octane's going to have his hands full, able to get through with one. Vance aware of his position, goes for the challenge. But how about the teamwork from Kenny? Watching over his good old buddy Octane as Kami and Insight makes somewhat of a dent. But they overall get traded out. LAT still with spawns. But Toronto not giving this one up. A scrappy game already. It's from the top side. Toronto eventually make the dent, and they will now have spawns. A flip for the Ultra, and 30 very valuable points still left on the board as Envoy looks to make the play. Yeah, and if you're the Thieves, you know you have the spawns for at least to that P3 hard point. But you don't want to give up this time as Draz is able to take down Vance off that point. Kenny wins a huge two-piece. So at least stop it for the time being. Going to lead that junk time. At least he's going to get it now. But Octane off the rotation. This spot back here. It's pretty much impossible to take someone off. <laughs> I call it the Godhead every time I spawn into the map, but Thieves are going to be set up early off the rotation for P3. That's going to be one of the more terrifying players to try and take out off of rotation. You think about a number of different guys who are going to be rotating early for their teams. Somebody who has a shot like Octane is never going to be easy to take on down. So Octane does his work from the back, Envoy doing his job from the front, and now Octane called upon pretty much try to hold off one of the primary lanes looking to lock down fire successful at doing that as three make it four down from Toronto Envoy frying from afar as well and Envoy being pushed out so far towards P1 is was spawning all of Ultra basically at church 25 seconds remaining on this P3 hardpoint if you're Ultra you have to rotate you cannot push this and then flip the spawns as Envoy and Kenny are able to pick up two in the feed, Octane with the third, and you already see number five, which is going to be Envoy, working for those rotations. And that's exactly why they want to have a guy like this on their team, full 60 and old, and he's or rather at the, the primary hill, and he's already trying to make plays at the next hard point. Eventually gets found out, but at the very least, it makes Ultra somewhat frustrated, trying to focus on so many things at once as Bantz. Getting some shots onto one, inside holding a corner. That's going to be three down off the rip for Thieves. And based off of that score, down by 50 points, Toronto are going to have to hold this one. It cannot afford to lose what is, at times, a money hill on this map. Going hunting his Vance. 
Finally cuts down Envoy, 185 to 222. Toronto, a good first half of this hard point hold, but Thieves still looking to try to provide some pressure. Draws to the last player alive, and it's Kleenex left to do the dirty work. Now all of Thieves are going to be spawning out towards the middle of the map. Sheet number eight, it's going to be Octane. He's thinking about the big picture. We have to think about the rotation. Great shots coming in from Kenny. But this final 10 is going to go in favor of the Ultra. LA Thieves still have the lead. They have the rotation. This is going to be a huge one-on-one -on -one for Octane if he can pick up this kill. This player on plat. As he's in a great corner here. 225 and climbing. Able to take down the first. Eventually Kami with the trade. But that's going to be three down in the feed. Now Ultra. Spawn's coming in from roof. Kenny has it cut off. And this can be bad. Vance has to try to go big. It's only 10 seconds until Thieves are able to close this one out. Only 10 more points. Toronto, they have to break on in. They have to to try and contest this at the very least. Vance, Scissor Prayer jumps on in. He gets taken down as well. But solid plays from Octane, waiting for his teammates to come off the of spawn. He wants to try and have a better oh. engagement overall, but it's three down. Draza, does he try to make the play? He gets cut down as well. And this is gonna put Toronto pretty much at a tie game if they hold every single second left. Thieves can still win it here, but Tammy is trying to prevent it the best way that he can, as that'll be four in a row for him. It's gonna be a race. It's gonna be a race now over toward P1. We've got ourselves a neck and neck game, and Vance, he gets picked apart. Great teamwork already from the LA Thieves. Five more points from the LA Thieves. Can they lock it up here? Toronto, can they get to the hill in time? They jump in at just the right time possible. It's a seven point game. Kenny trying to stay alive. Toronto, they're staying up. They're staying up, Cammy. He'll win the final fight in the hill, but he doesn't want to try to give up any map control. He has to push forward. Will we see a game five? It's tied, it's a two point game. LAT look to break on through, but Ultra, Ultra will hold. What a crazy ending to that game. Ultra, get back into this hard point with a great hold on P5. And then off the rotation, these were able to find three kills. But Kleenex being the last player alive, he takes down two players, and he was able to push out that point. He was, I thought I was questioning it for a second. I wanted Kleenex to hop that point, but obviously he's a better player than I am. He pushes out the cut, he allows his teammates to get on the point, eventually win a majority of those trades, and now we're going to a game five. Unbelievable, man. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Yeah. I almost passed out on the stage. I think it was bright red. That was an insane hard point, man. Oh my goodness, I mean, just taking a look throughout the scores here. I mean, we were talking a lot about Kleenex, 26 and 31, a ton of engagements for him. Oh, okay, I'm good. 29 and 24 from Gammy, 28 and 22 from Insight. I mean, my goodness, just the definition of a back and forth game. We'll take a look at the final minute of what we got to witness. Jay, I mean, talk us through us, or rather talk, talk us through it again. I apologize, lack of oxygen to the brain, but a seven points. LA Thieves were seven points away, 243 to 216. How did Toronto bring this one back? So right here, there's only 25 seconds. They're able to find all three kills of those players trying to attack it through that church side. And now with 20 seconds left, this is where if you're the Thieves, you give it one more push. You could still win it here because everybody on Toronto is going to start thinking about that rotation. But Camby goes so huge right here to pick up all three kills and then eventually find that kill. Bottom steps onto Kenny. Now look at the rotation though. This is where they try to go big. Thieves do such a great job as Envoy with the great shots onto Vance. Octane wins the gunfight onto Kleenex. Then here comes Cammy. He gets traded. They need three seconds to close this one out. Insight takes the guy wow. off the point. And then this is where the flood comes in from the Ultra. They have the man advantage, but Kleenex goes huge to find three to eventually close it out. The trade comes in from Cami, and then you just hold it. You hold it. You allow your teammates to hold, I mean, to respawn, and then come into the hard point. You take control of the middle of the map, and that was just in back and forth hard point. But with the hold that Ultra were able to get in towards the final seconds, oh, I'm at a loss of rest, man. That was an unbelievable hard point from both teams. Now we got a game five. I mean, it's wild, right? I mean, the discipline that you have to have if you're Toronto to literally see that score, say 248, and to just have that moment to pause, the moment to pause where they're gonna trust Insight to find that opening kill. And there's a moment too where Bance, he runs right through the center of the hard point to take the player off the opposite side, Uheddy. Incredible, incredible work 
from Toronto Ultra to keep themselves alive in this series. One of the better ones that we've had so far here at the Kickoff Classic. Let's see how socials react to this one. Coming in from Sean Collins. That Ultra versus Thieves Hardpoint rivals the excitement of the Ultra versus Empire Hardpoint from Champs last year. Obnoxiously fun. Hashtag CDL 2022. I could not agree more with my good old buddy, Sean Collins. Uh, like I said, one of the, one of the crazier Hardpoints that we have seen not just this year, because of course it's just a kickoff classic. Yeah, just started. <laughs> but in CDL history, in Call of Duty history, absolutely wild stuff. But again, you got to give all the props to Toronto there. Yeah, 100%. The only thing that Thieves could have done better on that at, at the very end of that game is like the person on the hill, instead of playing for the gunfight, sit on the backside. Yeah. Make Insight overextend to try to pick up that it's kill. It's so easy to say at this it's point. So it's so easy to still, say. Right. But once Insight picks up that kill, there was no one to fill that gap to try to get on the point. And that's what eventually allowed Ultra to flood, win a majority of the gunfights, and close out the map. Yeah. And that's going to provide you with quite a bit of momentum coming into this game five, which we know is going to be an absolute banger. If you have not already, make sure to use that hashtag. Again, you could possibly pop up on stream if you'd like. Hashtag CDL 2022. What have you thought so far about this series? And who do you think is going to walk away with this game five? Who is going to meet the Seattle Surge in the finals for our first event of the year? Will it be the Toronto Ultra or can it be the LA Thieves? Make sure and stay with us as it's going to be a fun one. Bocage, search and destroy when we come back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Call of Duty League Kickoff Classic presented by Zinni Gaming. The crowd is getting loud. We're getting hyped because it is game five time. Who is going to the finals along with the Seattle Surge? We have got a great map to find out on. It is the Toronto Ultra taking on the LA Thieves. If you've just joined us, we're going to look at that final map that we just witnessed here in just a few moments. Again, Jay, a crazy end to that Tuscan hard point. We'll see how socials reacted really quick before we've got those on, on screen for you. You see Alicia coming through. Oh my God, Kami, that comeback from Ultra. Oh my God. That was our reactions as well. Like, I nearly passed out on stage. Jay, you were losing your mind. I think we saw a few people in the crowd really fall out of their seats. A wild, wild run from Toronto. What was it again? It was like 2.15 to like 2.47. It was wild. And they were able to hold with a great P5 hold, but if Cammy doesn't get that three-piece, it's probably a different story. He gets a huge three-piece there, and then even off the rotation, the Thieves are able to find three kills. But once Inside finds that first blood, all of Ultra just went in there, flying with their guns up, just trying to get kills to eliminate these guys out of the point. And then Kleenex, he goes huge at the very end, finding three kills. Eventually, Cammy gets the trade, allows his teammates to get back into that point to force this game five. And this is gonna be the first time all weekend that we get to see Bokaj S&D between two phenomenal teams. I don't know how this one's gonna go, <laughs> but usually the way you wanna play this map, it's all about the A push. We're gonna have Toronto Ultra on the offense. See them slowly working up flat side. She's gonna have Draza watching low. Envoy opens up with the first blood with the nade. Great first kill. Coming through from Envoy, and as you said, first time seeing Bokaj search and destroy. You never know what to expect with a map of this caliber as Cami looked to level the score. Now at 3-3 three to three in terms of lives. We start with Bokaj and we'll end with it. And how about the nice angle there from Kleenex. Hops up on the gate. Now positions himself quite well. Now toward the attic. Lasferno finally gets some clearance, but that's right when Envoy can strike. Two for two in terms of kills as LA Thieves look to group up with numbers. But that's when Toby is there as well. The Great Dane from the top side. Cami can look to exploit things. Nearly has getting turned on him, but stays alive. A one versus one. Kleenex Spots him. versus Draza. But Draza, he's the player with the smoke. He tosses it out, and now it's time for the pistol. Draza continues to deliver. What a great round out of the Thieves right there. They get the early first blood. But then they make the adjustments. They do not sit in the back of the spawn when it's a 3v3. They push through tank side. Trades go back and forth, but then Draza, such a heads up play to get the immediate trade on the first guy. Spots the second, throws the smoke at his feet, hits him with a couple of shots, then pulls out the rat to eventually close out the round. Up 1-0, we're gonna be the Thieves. And how about the awareness too, right? To know that you have the smoke and that minute moment. That's such a small like centimeter of Absolutely. like time when you have to make that decision. And he got the job done there. Big brain plays from the Alaskan Assassin. Draza, the Envoy complete. The ace is down the look to try and attack this one. Nice shots from Bance. Gets a little dusty on the floor, but he'll wipe himself off. It's all good. First, not first blood, but first engagement rather is Cami. Able to find that one there on to Kenny. And Draza not ultimately comfortable with that plant. Obviously has Octane toward his side, but again, this is quite a big house. Grandma's got herself a good, pad, good pad. 45 seconds left. We're trying to just play a pick. Octane was able to at least spot a player in towards second story Grandma's. But Cammy with some great shots, able to take down Draza. Now Octane in the 1v3. Bomb's gonna be down towards the middle of the map. He's gonna get dropped. And just as quick as the Thieves were able to take the first round, Ultra respond, tied, tied at one apiece. And that's the ever-evolving story with this A side, right? You want to try to break on it, it's about these fast hits, but still, but still the defense, you never know where they can be hiding. A great and early kill there from Bance. Just to slow down the push, and I believe from there, Thieves, they don't have numbers, they don't feel confident about the plant. Why? Because they can come around and just wipe you off the plant at any moment. Good plays there from Benjamin. Now to bring us to one-to-one. -to -one. Cammy starting things off at four-and-one. So far, Kimmy has been their island player. Just working through low water side. And it's going to be their bomb carrier. Slowly pushing through A-plat. No one trying to give up anything. <laughs> no first bloods coming in with a nade this time. As Bance is going to creak his way through the front door. 
Cross is ready for, ready for it. He spots him, backs him down. But they still have a player in his mom's sight. Oh boy, he's gonna give us positioning as he opens that window. 50 seconds left. All out attack should come in towards A. And drops it right at the call. Is able to find the first, but quickly gets traded out. It's on the Kleenex. As he'll be responsible for two of his own. Kenny and Octane down a man, but we'll finally see the plant go on through the smoke just to cover. Cami in a great position toward the top. Kenny ends up getting taken down on the bomb site, and Cami having himself a start to this bocage. Six and one, continuing to take down the thieves. Great work on the bomb site. Pretty sure that was Kleenex. He actually picks up the ace on the round. So this is a good bounce back from Kleenex, man. To keep up that pressure in towards bottom middle, he goes for the immediate trade bottom. Grandma's gets both and then goes for the instant plant. So now on a force breeze, gonna be Kleenex. Him and Cami so far starting off this game five well. On a five spree, one kill off of a strafing run. You see these back on the offensive attack. Trying to push straight through middle gate. Kleenex is gonna be here, he's gonna get stunned. Spots the first, able to take down Draza, earns that strafing run. But now Kenny with the trade, it's time to get out with your life. You wanna play for this glide bomber for Kleenex. You absolutely do. Inside jumps on out. Ends up getting traded, but overall, ends that objective and Octane, pistol out, also gets found. But again, it really comes back to that play from inside. He jumps onto the bomb at just the right time. Great awareness there from Toronto and nice plays from Kleenex. And as you said, it keeps that streak alive moving forward. And now he has the glide bomb. He has a straight from run to work with. So now if you're ultra, you have the ability to take this bomb over towards that B bomb. Because once you use that glide bomb, you're going to make everyone back up. Sit inside grandma, sit inside tower. So that can open up that B site. It could be a 4v4 retake for the thieves. If they can execute it. We'll see how many forces the thieves will look to, look to establish it be. So not as much house control. You saw the thieves, they're probably aware right of that streak. They want to try to play nice and early. Not give up the site that you'd like to think Toronto would try and push given the streak that they've got. Pedraza again in the close quarters, trying to utilize the walls to his advantage, but he runs right into the jaws of Bance. Kleenex still on the spree. Again, going to continue to be the story of this round. A current three versus three as Envoy looks to reposition, and Bance will just get the bomb down in time. Now Kenny's going to go in for the immediate trace, and so now it's going to be a 3v2. Kleenex is still alive. You see him slowly starting to work his way around Grandma's. The behind one player he takes down Kenny. Now it's gonna be a 2v2. One player gonna be top Barney, spots him, gives the kill, gives the call out to Insight. Now in a 2v1 is gonna be Envoy. He knows the positioning of Insight, able to take him down. 1v1 versus Kleenex, and he's able to win it. Kleenex did not have the best game three. He did not have the best game four, but this game five, he has taken over. He is now sits at 10 and one. A great game for the Great Dane up to this moment. Had a phenomenal series yesterday versus the Mutineers. We've talked about 186 engagements. The guy likes to be involved in the fight. And oftentimes he's winning majority of those fights so far in the search to destroy. He has been close to flawless. Now on the nine spree. As we said, Toronto, they're gonna be sitting on streaks. And now already Thieves put in a precarious situation. Draza, smoke tossed. Runs right into the line of sight of Bantz. The SMG has continued to be a problem. In the bottom side, Kleenex finally gets wiped away. Nice plays coming in from Envoy. It's not just the two kills, but he'll also lay the objective. Riding his signature here on this round, number six. But Cami able to take him down. Nearly has the shots on the Kenny as well. Up to Insight. Now in the one versus two. Looking through the windows, and Kenny most likely hears this. And that's going to be the Thieves walking away with the round. Just great jobs coming in from Envoy. You, that was a great setup from the Ultra, though. They had both Kleenex and Bance sitting bottom grandmas waiting for that push to come from Kitchen. Bance gets the first kill, but then Envoy goes for the immediate trade. He knew that Kleenex was around the corner, gets the second, and goes for the instant plant. Great work from the Thieves to just take that round to him on the offensive attack, now down 4-2. Yeah, I mean, you called it. I mean, Toronto had a great setup established inside of the bottom house. I mean, Kleenex and Bance so good at working off of each other. But Envoy just too strong a round that they had to win, all things considered. You cannot go down 5-1 to one versus this Toronto crew.
back on the attack. Go the boys in purple. A little bit of a slower start. Aiming to find the pick, and again, Thieves consistently aware of when that streak could come in. The one to rocket it be, as you talked about, Jay, but here it comes. Now's the time for the glide bomb. No damage done. But at least it gains some information and allows for Vance to at least think about the plant. Hops off on it and will give it another go. Meanwhile, Kenny makes his way through the field. So the bomb's gonna go down. Octane's able to open up the first blood, so now it's gonna be a 4v3. Just pay attention to the remaining map. Kleenex waiting in bottom. Grandma's on boy, able to come up behind the player, able to take down inside. So now it's gonna be a 4v2. They're on to defuse. Kenny able to take down Kleenex all on Sammy in a 1v3. Takes down the first, but that's gonna be a successful retake from the Thieves on the A point. Usually do not see that happen, but once Octane's opens up with that first blood on the player on bomb site, it opens it wide up. You know that there's not gonna be a single other player in towards Grandma's. They stick the defuse, they get the kills. Now down 4-3. And they also, like you said, avoid the streak as well. So that was a huge play that we were waiting for again. They utilize it for that information. The Thieves pretty much hide out and they're able to escape with it. Because now we'll head in to our eighth. Four rounds to three. Thieves clawing their way back. Some great plays as of late being made from Envoy. He's got something brewing. Potentially toward the back side of field. The only player who could even see this is if Insight goes for the rotation, but Octane takes down Cami for the first blood, and as we said, nobody's back here. And look at Envoy. He's gonna know that this player inside tower makes it a 4v2. Great plays from him. You see the bomb starting to rotate towards that B site. Kleenex almost picks up the kill. But number one on your mini map, which is gonna be Vance, slowly working his way through bottom mid, able to take down the first in Kenny. Now they have control of their spawn, the Thieves. 3v2, 35 seconds left. And Envoy able to wipe away the final one. LA Thieves down 4-1 and now have made it an even game. But we got to talk about the continuous routes, right? Octane finds the first pick again, and Envoy being a problem on the flank. That has got to put, and the rest of this game, you got, that has to put so much worry in Toronto Ultra's mind, knowing that he could be flanking you at any moment. He just knows where to find the lane. He knows where to find that opportunity. A great search and destroy player. And showing it early on here in Vanguard. As here we go, four to four Thieves. Now bring it toward a tie game. And Toronto, not messing around. They'll plant this one down nice and early, but here comes Envoy again. Bomb does get planted, and Envoy wins another! Nearly finds the third, but his presence is felt without a doubt. And he's left the Thieves with the overall man count advantage. Raza, he's on the fuse right now. Ultra, they'll come around the corner. Kami's there to read him. Can't find the other. As that'll be Kenny to pick him off. Now up to Insight. A one versus two. Now make it a 1v1. Insight, the number one player in KD last year in Search and Destroy. But it's a different title, Kenny says. 12 seconds left. He'll hop Gotta on go. it. Insight, gotta go. is he gonna come here in time? He knows he has to be on the defuse. Can he get here around the corner? Can he find it? And he does! Insight makes the clutch! Just a great round from Ultra. The instant A plan. They knew there had to be a 4v4 retake. Trades were going back and forth, but Insight, with the repositioning to back up to the back tank, get the kill on the Octane, and he plays the clock beautifully. Kenny was so close to getting that defuse, but Ultra were able to walk away with the round in the nick of time. Now at game point, Thieves, <laughs> the tournament lives on the line. We'll see what All out do. attacked in the middle of the map. Vance is able to get the first blood. And that's also gonna be bombed down. Off the back of draws that that one lays to the center of the map. The crowd rooting on the Thieves. Again, they drop for the first blood, Envoy. He's gonna rock dead silence. Again, making his way on the flank. Kleenex, he doesn't spot him, but he's got some teammate support. In fact, he does. I thought for a moment that Toby didn't even see him, but he does. A two versus four, Kenny and Octane. Longtime friends. And now in the biggest of situations, Kleenex from range. And now it's all gonna be on the Octane, and he falls as well. Toronto will hold on.
one. Up four to one, the Thieves make it competitive. But the chemistry will win out today. Ultra are never out of any series. They fight back in the game four to force it to the game five. They're up 4-1 and start is getting scary as the Thieves are starting to bring it back. But the final two rounds was a 1v2 clutch coming in from Insight. And in that very final round, I thought that Envoy was in a great position to pick up that kill on the Kleenex. But Cami was going to save his life, turns it into a 4v2, which eventually turns into a 4v1 all left up to Octane. Just great work from the Ultra. They come out in this series winning both Search and Destroys, winning that game four to close it out. If you're the Thieves, there's only one thing you basically need to focus on when you get home, is your Search and Destroy. Their yep. respawns are looking amazing. Hard point, five and one throughout the weekend. They win a control today. Just the chemistry from the Ultra really stood out here. Yeah, it absolutely does. And again, the new LA Thieves roster coming into this year. But we'll take a look again here at this Game 5. A wild one, to put it lightly. We cannot forget about the clutch that Draza makes there to kick things off. A number of different highlight moments, but really the early phases of the game, Jay, it was all in Kleenex. Yeah, man, this guy opened up with an early three-piece into one round. And then the following round, he picked up the ace which eventually earned him some streaks. He ended on a nine spree before he was eventually taken down. But then slowly but surely, Thieves started fighting back. They started to get the streaks to get invested on the side of the Ultra. Then they were tied at four apiece. That 1v2, they probably could have played a little bit different. Both players play by bomb. One guy hops it. You just force Insight to play closer towards that bomb. But once he takes down that kill on the Octane, Kenny commits towards the gunfight. It's too late for him to try to get that defuse. But just a back and forth game between both of these teams, man. I cannot wait to see what these teams look like going down the rest of the season. Oh, yeah. You have got to give a lot of props to both of these teams. LA Thieves, again, a new roster coming into this season. I mean, in terms of coming into the kickoff classic, not a, not a lot of people rating them highly. The fact that they're able to get past Optic Texas yesterday and now sending the Toronto Ultra to a game five. I mean, two seconds away from beating the Ultra in this series. There's a lot to be excited about if you are an LA Thieves fan, but Toronto showing us yet again, despite maybe the lack of practice that they had versus the top teams in the CDL, they are still a solid roster, to put it lightly. A great, great win here for Toronto. But oh boy, what a game it was. Ultra are able to escape, and now they will have a date with the Seattle Surge. That's going to be it for myself and Study, as now we'll toss it over to Veli in the desk to break down the game. Thank you so much, Study and Lando, baby. But ladies and gentlemen, our finals are finally set, but let's talk about Toronto Ultra for just a minute. Nameless, man, you was loving Toronto when it came to the respawn game modes. I mean, well, when it came to the search and destroys, yeah, they, yeah. they were absolutely insane. Uh, you know, they capitalized on a lot of the mistakes, and even in that game five search and destroy, they were able to get that A-bomb down like four different times, get away, and secure the round. It was it was great plays by them. Kleenex really stepping it up in that game five, pushing up early to pick up those streaks. He was going off, man. Yeah, definitely. Man, search and destroy, my bad. Yo, Ali, this is it. The Thieves are finally going home, and um, Toronto, they moved up. I mean, we got to talk about Kleenex, man, especially in that final S and D. And even then, he's negative. His KD is negative right now, which is crazy. I knew this series would go the distance, man, but I also want to bring up that Cami really went off, especially in that control, man, that four piece on that final hill when Thieves made the decision to try and get that scra scrap time to close out the map and getting that four piece. I, it was a momentum flip at that point forward. Definitely. Yeah, and Veli, like I was saying before the series started, right, this is going to be a hard, drawn-out series, and we saw Toronto. I think it's just more of the chemistry and just seeing how longevity of this roster has been together. I loved what I was seeing, but I think as a Thieves fan, it's super promising. It looked really good going to go going against the second best team in the entire game right now. I can't wait for this finals though, Belly. Right now, speaking of the finals, Nameless, they're gonna be going against the Seattle Surge, who is a team that is fuming right now. This team just feels unstoppable. There's no pressure on them, and yeah. Toronto, they're kind of expected to be here. What type of finals matchup are you really looking forward to? Man, I think it's gonna come down to the control. I mean, okay. Seattle's just been absolutely insane in control, 3-0 in that game mode. Pred is getting up close and personal. He's being super annoying, and Sib is really starting to get comfortable as well. These young rookies, man, they're absolutely taking over these games like they're gonna have to figure out a way to shut them down all right um steady and lando i know you guys are still up there right now you won't be casting on the finals but i'm gonna have to ask you both who do you think is gonna win this finals matchup i think it's gonna be an absolute battle between both of these teams but for me i think i'm going seattle okay i really am because their respawn okay. so far throughout this weekend is unbelievable they're 9-0 in control 
and I feel like they're going to be able to walk away with this one. Yeah, I agree. The reason why I looked at you and said, okay, because I, I thought you were going to go Toronto, but no. uh, I'm, I'm going to make the same pick. I'd love to pick Ultra in this series, but I just okay. feel like the way that Seattle have been looking, as Study said, that 9-0 and record right now in the control rounds is nothing to... Uh, it's nothing to scoff at, and I think based off of that first hard point, to me, that's going to that's gonna say a lot, and uh, I just like the Seattle Surge right now, Bill. Right, Steady, so talking about the LA Thieves just for a second, I mean, this team, they shouldn't be going home with their heads down. No. They came out into this event, and they all popped off like crazy, and losing to Toronto, I mean, they shouldn't be upset, right? Definitely not, because I'm pretty sure before we even started this weekend, they were, pretty, they were ranked pretty low uh, throughout the coaches, throughout the players, so the fact that they were able to come here, win two matches, a match versus Optic Texas that was amazing. And then to push all the way, a team like Toronto Ultra all the way to a game five, they were a brand new roster, man. You can just tell that this team has high promise, like Slack said, and I can't wait to see what they look like down the line. All right, Lando, any final thoughts, baby? Lay it on us. Oh, I tell you what, man, the crowd here at Esports Stadium in Arlington, Texas oh, yeah. has been beautiful. Yes. We absolutely love you guys. It has been a wonderful event so far here at the Kickoff Classic, and obviously that'll be it for myself and Jay here to, to, to kick off the very first event of Vanguard, but it's been a blast, and uh, we can't wait for the finals. Well, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys in the back room, but back to the desk for a second, Nameless, this is finally it. So many teams came in, the best Call of Duty players in the world, yeah. came to the CDL Kickoff Classic to compete in. Now it has only come down to two. I know. Who would have expected Seattle to be in this position, right? <laughs> like maybe Sam Phoenix and the guys on the team, but nobody else. They've exceeded all expectations. They've taken out the world champs that we have in Atlanta phase, and the young rookies are lighting it up in every single map that they play. And then it, this is like Accuracy's bounce back tournament. Oh, Obviously, yeah. his name has been getting dragged through the mud. We talked about that the last two days, and he's here showing people like why he deserves to still be a leader on these teams. So shout out to him, and I hope he continues to do well. The crowd is loving that right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket to see how both of these teams have wound up in the finals and it has been a tough journey but for Seattle this was expected on their end they 3-0 the London Ravens they win against the Atlanta face calls the biggest upset of the event with a 3-1 victory beat NYSL and now they're going against Toronto Toronto on the other end CDL's second best team, Allie, and now they're trying to prove that they are the best here today. I completely agree, and it's going to be kind of the same deal for me. It feels like Seattle's going to have to shut down the likes of Cam Cami and Kleenex, but I look at the side of Seattle Surge, man, and it's look really promising with Mac and Fred frying the way that they have been. We are going to be in for a very long gravity of a match. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about time we take a small break, but after that, we have a lot more CDL action. This whole weekend comes down to this one last game. The Seattle Surgeon, the Young Guns, facing against Toronto Ultra in their ultimate experience. I can't wait. We'll see you guys for, for the grand finale of this event.